Hi guys, it's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command. And I uh, wanted to wish you a happy holiday season, <laughs> unless you're watching this uh, days or weeks or months or years from now, in which case I'm wishing you a happy whatever day you're on. Uh, I wanted to talk today about an amazing news item that uh, recently came out, and it's certainly something that uh, I never thought I would see in my lifetime. And you may have see, uh, heard of this or seen this or, or not. But um, I've, since I was a kid, of course, I've been a huge dinosaur nut, as are um, most science fiction fans, including uh, Ray Bradbury, who was my dear friend and mentor. And, uh, you know, and so since we were kids, we've seen, you know, fo fossils and photos of fossils and, and skeletons of dinosaurs at museums and, uh, you know, artistic representations and filmic representations of what dinosaurs look like. But last week, there was something amazing that happened which was they found a 99-year-old amber, piece of amber, with a real dinosaur tail inside. This is not a fossil. This is the actual dinosaur tail preserved in amber. It includes the, the vertebra, the, the, the muscle, the, the skin, the, the, and, most importantly, the feathers covering the tail. And it's a soft, soft hair-like looking feature doesn't look like a bird tail. Uh, it's much more uh, pliable, less rigid than, than bird tails are generally in modern birds. It's amazing. They can also even detect the color. The, this, this creature, which is a colosaur, which is a, a relative of uh, Tyrannosaurus rex and Velociraptor, uh, was uh, a mixture, they think, a mixture of brown and white feathers and they had an artistic representation of what it looked like. But it's amazing. It's, so to, to actually see part of a real dinosaur 99 million years old, amazing, simply amazing. And uh, now this was a, a young uh, dinosaur. If it had grown to full size, it would have been the size of an ostrich. So just think of that, amazing, wonderful. And 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 it almost wasn't wasn't found. The uh, it was for sale in a in a uh, an outdoor market in uh, Myanmar, Myanmar, which it used to be called Burma. And amazingly, uh, a scientist found it and recognized it for what it was and, uh, and bought it. And uh, previously they had found feathers in amber, but without the vertebra, they couldn't tell what kind of dinosaur it, ha it was. Now they can. This is a vertebra that says it's a theropod, uh, which again is, is the, 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 uh, the family that both Tyrannosaur and, and Velociraptor raptor belong to. So it's just, it's just spectacular. So I'm thrilled about that. They're going to be looking for more amber in that area to see if they find any, any more dinosaurs and more of the dinosaur in amber. Amazing. And, uh, but just phenomenal because, again, we can look at, these, at, this, at this part of this dinosaur, the tail, and realize that these things didn't look like reptiles. They really were much more bird-like. I think if you had seen this in life, you would have said, huh, is that an ostrich or is it, well, wait, it, it doesn't have a beak. It's got a mouth with teeth. It's got um, clawed, clawed hands. But, but it would have looked much more like a bird with those features and, and, and a longer tail. Uh, but it wouldn't have looked at all like, like a, an iguana. And, uh, and it's fascinating because, of course, since dinosaurs were first discovered, uh, science fiction writers have embraced, uh, embraced dinosaurs and tried to bring them back to life in, in fiction and film and so forth. So one of the earliest, and it's still a wonderful read, I highly recommend it, is The Lost World by Arthur Conan Doyle, written in 1912. Uh, this was made into a very fun silent film with Wallace Berry in the 1920s, and uh, it had animated stop-motion dinosaurs uh, that were done by um, by the same animator who did King Kong in 1933. So uh, really spectacular. It has Tyrannosaurus, it has Brontosaurus, just just terrific. And of course, many of us who follow dinosaurs know that Brontosaur was. Uh, uh, a misnomer. Uh, they actually took the body of one dinosaur skeleton and the head of another and grafted it together and made brontosaur. But, but those of us who grew up in a certain time uh, don't want to abandon brontosaur, just like we don't uh, want to abandon Pluto as a planet. No, God damn it! there's nine planets in this solar system and Pluto is one of them. And, and photographs show that that thing's a planet. God damn it! Uh, that's, uh, who, they should have taken a vote, you know, and, and counted the, uh, the majority vote. I won't go into politics, won't go into politics. We are, this is Mr. Sci-Fi. We're going to avoid that today. But um, uh, with dinosaurs, it just continued on. And of course, there's very bad dinosaur movies that like stick a, a fin on an iguana or something like that and just look hokey. But the stop motion dinosaurs of Ray Harryhausen and others are quite wonderful. And then, of course, you get to movies like Jurassic Park. And, and even the novel by Michael Crichton is a very fun read. And now, more, more recently, Jurassic World, which, although it's a flawed film, has some very fun dinosaur moments. And, uh, 
you know, and, and then, you know, so, so basically we all dream about dinosaurs. My, fr my friend Ray Bradbury wrote two great dinosaur stories. One was called The Foghorn, which was made into a film. It was about a foghorn whose cry, whose, whose uh, horn, whose sound uh, lures a dinosaur. It's like the mating call of a dinosaur, and a dinosaur comes up out of the ocean looking for its one last long-lost mate. And the other great story is The Sound of Thunder, about time travelers going back to... Uh, to the past and hunting dinosaur and going off the path and stepping on a butterfly and it changes the future radically and you know people talk about the butterfly effect but I really think the, 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 the butterfly effect came from that story because it specifically kill a butterfly it changes everything so um, and there were many other science fiction stories. There was a, a story called The Gun for Dinosaur, similar notion of going back in time to hunt dinosaurs. There's, uh, and then you know, basically science fiction divides into going back into the past to see dinosaurs and then alternatives where dinosaurs are alive in the modern world, like um, Jurassic Park and The Lost World. And of course, even in um, Iron Sky 2, which is coming up, uh, the trailer showed Hitler riding a dinosaur. And so <laughs> we'll see what that's like. That should be a lot of fun. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about these things, but the most amazing thing, of course, is that all of us can now look at what a dinosaur actually looked like, at least its tail. It's very tantalizing. It's quite wonderful. And, um, and also there are certain movies, if you look for them, there are certain films and even documentaries that show dinosaurs as much more bird-like. And, uh, and I think in future uh, we'll see more and more of these representations. And, of course, uh, they recently did... A, did uh, a scientist had the brilliant idea of... Um, analyzing in fossils some of the pigment cells to determine the coloration of dinosaurs <clears throat> and was able to actually give the color of several dinosaurs which there was one dinosaur that had feathers that were black and white and red and uh, at least this is the uh, speculation but it's it's based on pigment cells that reflect color and even it, and it's the shape of them so even fossilized the shape would um would, would, would give a good indication of the color based on, on modern birds. And, and again, I'm sure most of you know that the, the birds are direct descendants of dinosaurs. So when you see a, a pigeon or a chicken or an ostrich, that's, that's a dinosaur you're looking at. And, uh, and the fascinating thing, of course, is that uh, if you look at an ostrich particularly, those really look like bipedal dinosaurs. And I'm sure the way they act and the way they move is much the way dinosaurs, uh, you know, bipedal dinosaurs moved and uh, like a velociraptor, those kind of dinosaurs. And it's very funny because one of the, uh, the dinosaur scientists had an idea of reverse engineering a bird back into a, uh, uh, something that would look much more like a dinosaur because you can actually alter genes. And uh, because when dinosaurs are developing, they have you know, various features that, that change to be more bird-like, but, but in the womb or in the egg, they're, um, they're much more like dinosaurs. And so this scientist wanted to reverse engineer a dinosaur out, out of a bird by giving it teeth instead of a beak, by giving it a, a tail, a much more like a reptilian tail, a long tail rather than a bird's tail, and, um, and also giving it uh, fingers, you know, instead of, of wings. And he was going to work on that with a chicken. It was, it was called a chickenosaurus. You can look it up. It hasn't been done yet, but it was speculated, talked about, and uh, it was supposedly in process. But if, if, if I were him, what I would do is I would do that to an ostrich. Because if you had an ostrich that had teeth instead of a beak, a long tail, and claws, fingers, and, uh, you know, that would, that would really look like a dinosaur. So, um, so that's it. But, um, but anyway, I thought I want, this would be great news to share with you. I never thought I would see a photo of any part of a real dinosaur in my lifetime. So to see that was, uh, was great news and great to wake up to the other day. So that's it for now. We'll talk to you all soon. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye-bye.